Oh, there we go. Seasonal. It looks like a fish. Yep, that's... Oh, let's see here. Hmm. Oh my goodness. That tastes so good. Oh, hello folks. Yep, for I'm the one, the only, I am a Hobo Tom. I'll be 100% honest. That is the first beer I've had since Christmas. Cause yeah, because I don't know what got into my system in January. But yeah, that was not good. Nor healthy. So I laid off the booze a little bit. Although I've put on weight, which is not good. I have to cut five pounds somehow. That's not good. <laughs> but yeah, this is the first beer. And this is a Sweetwater Mosaic Single Hop Hazy IPA. And just like anything, if you haven't had it in a long time, wow, it tastes so good. I'm not here to give you a beer review, though. Although, if you would want me to review a variety of adult beverages, leave me a comment. I'm here to talk about some pro wrestling, and this is the double show. This is where I talk about both non-WWE shows. Uh, remember, a little news and note here. <coughs> Tomorrow, Tomorrow, it's someone's, someone's birthday. birthday. Yeah, someone in this room's birthday. birthday. Although, she just doesn't count. But yeah, it's yeah. Someone's, birthday. someone's birthday. So I'm going to take the night off from wrestling, getting a fancy pizza, and a fancy bottle of sparkling red wine. And I got the movie Dune. Again, go back into my video archive and check out my Dune review. Amazing movie. Oh, that's one of the... I think that whole scene sent shivers down my spine. Because they say that's mongro... Mongolian throat singing. I'll tell you what, though. I was listening to some um, Viking music. It's pretty close to that, too. Again, that's the Sadakov for you. I'm not here to talk about Sadakov. I'm here to talk about AEW. Well, first, it's going to be AEW. But even before I talk about AEW, Mr. Azerbaijan, you, sir, live in that mundo... Madness moment. Now it's time to talk about some AEW. And wow, it was an it was an interesting show. I'll tell you what, I was fairly entertained. Uh, they did have a lot of story times. AEW is going very sports. I don't know another sip of beer first. You know, oh, delicious. Ah, so good. But yeah, they're going the WWE route of telling stories and sports entertainment versus pro wrestling. We'll see why. Again, the hint, it's in the title. But yeah, it starts off AEW, they had the tag team Battle Royal. I'm always a fan of Battle Royals. Uh, for the most part, this was just a smosh. Again, the way Battle Royal should be. The Butcher, the Blade. The Young Bucks, Red Dragon, FTR, 2.0, uh, LAX, Best Friends, Private Party. 
Yeah. I know I'm missing some tag team there somewhere. 2.0, I think I already said. But yeah, whatever. I might be missing a tag team or two. Trust me. If I didn't mention them, they're not worth mentioning. Um, I know from where I cut in, I actually went to the gym fairly long. And what did I have for dinner last night? What did I have for dinner last night? Oh, it was Jersey Mike's. So yeah, I stopped by Jersey Mike's first. So yeah, I came in just a little bit late. Jersey Mike's such a good sandwich. Oh, if you're from the New York, New Jersey area, you ever moved to Florida? Jersey Mike's is the closest thing you get. But yeah, other than that, um, we have our tag team battle royal. When I began to watch the butcher begins to take out everyone, the butcher's a beast. He looks scary. I don't want to see him in dark alley, even if I had a gun. And a knife. If I had both a gun and a knife, I'd still be scared to see him. Again, very dark alleys. They're not good places, folks. Bad things happen in dark alleys. Even though you hear sometimes good things happen in dark alleys, not really. But yeah, uh, he takes out everyone. Uh, the butcher, he does get eliminated by the best friends because the best friends always have to hug it out. Uh, fish. No, Riley, uh, the Dragon Screw, le Dragon Screw, Legwick Kick thing. That's awesome. Um, Private Party gets eliminated, and Matt Hardy, like, leaves. He's upset with Private Party. We're going to wait for Brother Nero. I knew you'd come. There we go. We're going to see a, a for the renewal of the Hardy on and off again feud who knows they've done that impacted it the best WWE had its moments but pizza eating pizza eating contest anything you can do I can do better thing but brother Nero <laughs> I knew you'd show up that's what Matt Hardy has to do uh, Santana, he takes out 2.0, which is great. And then we get a super kick party. And there we go. I just broke my camera again. That's okay. I have to make a second video anyway. So, yeah, this is just going to be lagging behind. But, yeah. Super kick party. Time. Uh, the, double, the double tag team on FTR is O'Reilly and Fish. <laughs> And the Young Bucks were beating up FTR. That was great. I think it was, say, Nick Jackson and Bobby Fish beating up the one. Say, Dax Wilder. And Kyle O'Reilly and Matt Jackson were beating up Dax Wilder. Cash Wheeler. Yeah, or something to that effect. That was good to see. Uh, Trent takes out Bobby Fish. Tully, he gets admonished by the ref. Um, at this point, once, once Tully gets tossed, there are no full teams left, so it's every man for themselves. Oh, yeah, that's right. The Dork Order was there, too. I mean, Dark Order. John, John Silver and, and his partner. Um, Yeah, so then it was uh, Silver had the straight jacket backstabber. That looked vicious. That actually looks pretty cool. Hold a person by their neck, jump up, knees to the back. That, that actually looks pretty cool. Uh, what else here? A little yay booze there. Between Santana and Trent, they had to renew their rivalry from the backstage street fight. Or the, the parking lot brawl at Daly's place. Daly's place is such a dump. I'm sorry. Oh yeah, folks. Even though I do have Wednesday off, I'm not going. I don't. I had such a bad experience last time at Daly's place. I'm not going again. I refuse to go to Daly's place. Orlando. Ugh. That's the sixth. I have to work that day. You have to pay the bills somehow. And God knows I'm not going to be at that job for long anyway. Yeah, we'll see. It's week by week for the next 24 working days or 42 calendar days. 
Or you know, I get suspended. Or I quit. Not resign, just like say screw this and walk out. Who knows? I think the boss did buy donuts for everyone, which is kind of weird. But then both the team lead got food poisoning. And the other assistant manager is in, I don't know, Air Force land. I have no idea. Some days with him. Even though he's a really nice guy, man, he's out there. I haven't even met the new team lead. Again, yeah, I think I called out once, and that's when I had to attend a meeting for my promotion at the racetrack. Once in three years, and already this one person ate hibachi and got food poisoning. Why? She had bad sushi. Who knows? She, she put the cold sushi on the warm plate. Bad idea. <laughs> and she let it sit there while her, her hibachi was... Her hot hibachi was right next to it. <laughs> yeah. All that just sounds so bad. Uh, where was I now? I got sidetracked. Oh yeah, then Jackson and O'Reilly get rid of Santana and Trent. Uh, Silver hit a one-on-two suplex. Uh, O'Reilly got, got rid of Jackson. Red Dragon wins. So Red Dragon gets a title shot at... Um, Jurassic Express at the, the pay-per-view. Paige comes in, jumps Red Dragon. Cool. Adam Cool, baby! Shows up. Um, then we have... I think it's beat up, though. Because then the rest of the Dork Order show up. And then it's story time with Adam Page. And, and he just tells about how he was in Bullet Club. Brought in by... Adam Cool! Baby, boom! There we go. And now he's gonna hit the buckshot lariat. Boom! Uh, MJF cut a promo, made people cry, and I'm like listening to it. I'm like, whoa, that's 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 a little deep there, buddy. I I enjoy the good stuff, but yeah, this is too heavy. I just want to be entertained. Punk shows up and it's like, really, is that real? Do you need a hug? <laughs> Might as well have said, do you need a hug? Uh, let's see here. It was 2.0 and Daniel Garcia cut a promo. Daniel Garcia faces Daniel Bryan a little bit later. I'll tell you what, in an amazing match. You know what, before I get to it, before I forget that, the Tag Team Battle Royal, it was fun, actually. Cheeseburger match. Our next match, then what else? Um, yeah, we had the House of Black taking on Death Triangle. Uh, Pentagon's, Pentagon, I don't know, Dark, whatever he is. Uh, Pen, uh, Pentagon goes for the, the leg kicks, Vicious. Then there was some weird stuff, like a, like a weird tag team combination. It was just weird. Uh, Brody King can fly for a big man who's covered in tattoos. Again, he looks terrifying too. I do not want to see Brody King in Dark Alley. Even if I have a gun and a knife. Because he might mug me, headbutt me, and, and leave me for the sewer rats. The sewer rats are vicious. I don't know. Dog, chihuahua eating rats. Vicious. Do not want to see sewer rats. Saw him once in New York. Never want to see him again. Yeah. Malachi Black hit the Meteora. That's what that move is. Stupid Excalibur. Sock face. Sock head. Whatever Jim Cornette calls you. Pentagon uh, Jr. hits a flying crossbody. Brody gets, gets um, staggered by kicks. So that little heel miscue. There was no miss. Instead, there was a roll-up victory. Which was kind of weird. You know, I forgot who even won that match. I want to say the House of Black won somehow. Because then they just beat up everyone. 
So yeah, this was kind of confusing. Yeah, they were going to kill. Oh no, I know what happened. Yeah, because, yeah. House of, I think, Death Triangle 1. It was like some weird roll-up. Yeah, because, um, the bastard Pack hit the weird roll-up. And then they beat up Pack. Then they're going to kill Pentagon with a shovel he brought. Then Buddy Matthews came in and swerved. Oh, and then there was chairs in the ring. And then the stomp on the chairs. Well, they had light issues, though, too. I'll tell you what. With that Jacksonville crowd, with that dump of Daly's Place, I don't want to be there when they have electrical issues. That, that also would freak me out. Again, I don't want to be in Daly's place unless unless I have a knife and a gun. Uh, again, place is a dump. And it's way too expensive and it's credit card only too. Which sucks even more. Again, there's no way. See, see this delicious can of sweet water beer? I got a 12 pack for like $15. So say this was, I don't know, doing the math quickly, $1.15. That's not, that's not a bad price for a good can of quality beer. There's no way in hell I'm paying $11 for a can of Yingling beer. Not happening. A 12-pack of Yingling costs like eleven ninety nine. For 99 more cents, I can get a 12-pack. No, not happening. Again, delicious, effervescent. Hoppy tasting, good bitter beer for a dollar fifteen, or a can of average beer for eleven bucks. Eh, eh. You know, you know where I'm going with that, folks. Yeah, way overpriced. It is ridiculous. Um, then there was Eddie Kingston and Chris Jericho. More story time. I could care less. And then we had Ricky Starr versus Ten. Oh, wait, the House of Black match. I keep on forgetting to rate these matches. The House of Black versus Death Triangle. That was good. Cheeseburger match. You know, we had story time with Eddie Kingston and Chris Jericho. Eddie Kingston. Eddie Kingston almost made the one security guy crack. Eddie Kingston's so good. Um, everyone just likes to sing Chris Jericho's theme song. That's about that. <laughs> Although Chris Jericho said, you said, yeah, yeah, Eddie was coming in. He thought it was Eddie Edwards. Oh, burn, boom. And then next match we had was Ricky Sarks versus 10 of the Dork Order. I mean, Dark Order. Uh, 10 hit the big shoulder tackle. Uh, Ricky hit a couple of poses. 10 with a suplex. Then put a full Nelson, that looks pretty good. Starks was getting beat up for most of this match, but every so often he would show that flash. That one instant of greatness. Um, Stark, Starks goes for something, hits this big spear, pins 10 of the Dark Order. I don't know, I could have had that same match. Ham sandwich of a match. Then Red Dragon and Adam Cole, baby! Boom! On the back, um, they have some words with the Young Bucks. And I think they get jumped by some other tag team. Uh, yeah, when it comes to story time, I could care less. And who is this? Oh, yeah. Then we had um, Jade Cargill versus The Bunny. This was really weird because this made Jade Cargill look, look lousy. Uh, Jade Cargill has... She's learned the arm ringer and a whole bunch of the arm ringer takedown, arm bar takedowns, so many arm locks. She's learned something. Uh, Bunny hit the baseball hips, baseball slide hip attack, which looked really weird. Um, then Bunny's good at the chin lock. Jade hit a big back elbow to get a bit. Bunny, she's a heel. Ah, uh, 
<laughs> Raking the eyes of Jade Cargill, who I guess is the face in this match. Even though she's very heelish. Uh, yeah, Matt Hardy tosses the brass knuckles in. Uh, Smart Mark Sterling tosses a belt in. The referee's like looking at, at these weapons in the ring scene. And poor Aubrey's like, you out. It's Matt Hardy and you out to Matt Sterling. So that, so both managers get rejected. Um, yeah, because Bunny went to hit Jade Cargo with a brass knuckle. She blocked it with a belt. Although she flung that belt pretty far. That was impressive. And even Aub ref, ref, poor ref Aubrey like, had to look. What the hell is that? Oh, look at this. You know what? They should have offered Cody a very comfortable couch, I guess. Then maybe he would have stayed in AEW. Because look at my EVP right there. The, the chief financial officer and chief of security of a hobo production facilities. And anytime I get to showcase my little kitty cat, I always will. And hopefully I didn't knock wires out because some wires are really loose on this old computer. Yeah, um, Jade eventually turns it down the rabbit hole, got countered by Jade. Oh, yeah, the down the rabbit hole got countered by Jade and turned that into the Jaded. Uh, Jade Cargill went in, she was doing an interview, and then Ty Conti shows up. And, like, they're, like, staring, like, 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 nose to nose, and, like, Jade Cargill, like, kisses her on the head. Whoa! What's going on there, folks? Oh my goodness. So yeah, that was pretty cool. This match itself was a ham sandwich, though. I have a funny feeling that, <laughs> of all people, cheerleader Allie, the bunny, was carrying this match. Then we had, Oh, bask in his glory. Oh, bask in his glory. Keith Lee. Keith Lee did an interview. That was pretty cool. Then, I'll tell you what. This match was amazing. It was David. Uh, Daniel Garcia versus Daniel Bryan. The Battle of the Daniels. Um, first, they exchanged chops. Uh, Bryan went for an ankle pick. With a kind of Indian deathlock thing. And then he hit the, the hobo breaker. The butterfly suplex into the Juju Katani. No one. And the Daytona Beach Bumpy League adds the Hobo Breaker. That was awesome to see. Garcia's no slouch though, man. He like reversed that somehow into a into a near Muda lock. Brian and, and Garcia. This match was a technical masterpiece. If you want to see technical mat submission submission wrestling, oh my goodness. This Daniel Garcia, I'm gonna sing his praises forever. What the hell he's doing with 2.0, those two stupid Canucks. I, I, I mean Canadians. I, I shouldn't be using bad language on YouTube. But yeah, those two, two stupid drunk Canadians. I don't know what I don't know what they're going to teach Daniel Garcia. Daniel Garcia could probably teach them something. But yeah, the counter-wrestling was amazing. Garcia had a big dragon screw leg whip on Daniel Bryan. Bryan, the inside-out suplex. And then the knee plus on the outside. Bryan, the half-crab to the heel hook. The tiger soup to the tiger suplex, and then the cattle mutilation. This was amazing. The counters back and forth. This match did not end until Daniel Bryan literally put Daniel Garcia to sleep in the triangle sleeper, um, and then he began to 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 sing the louds, as Doctor Tom would. Say. What does louds mean anyway? I think it means like praise or something. Yeah, he was singing the louds of Daniel Garcia. He really put Daniel Garcia over at the end of that promo. That was amazing. 2.0 2.0 jumped Daniel Bryan. Then Moxley shows up. Last image we see is, is Daniel Bryan with a chair. Moxley's staring at him. Moxley's like, you're going to use that chair? Daniel Bryan's like, I'll make you bleed, and I won't need the chair. This will be an interesting match at Revolution. And I'll tell you what. This is one of the few times... This was a filet mignon match. If 
you want to see a great technical match, again, Daniel Bryan's really good. Early in his career, is really slow, but this this was well paced. And I'll tell you what, I applaud both Daniel Garcia and Daniel Bryan. In fact, you know what? We're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. So let's take a quick little break. So I switch. Let's switch gears to a little shorter show. Impact Wrestling. Yep, it has been a while since I've seen an Impact Wrestling show. And I can say, you know what? I tried to get to the DMV. That wasn't happening. Got video done today. Jeez, I have to go to the DMV on someone's birthday. I wonder whose birthday that could be. Hmm. I wonder. What, what, why is my thumb pointing towards my head? I have no idea. But but yeah, I have to sit. I have to stand in line at the DMV on someone special's birthday. That's gonna suck. Then I have to go to work, which isn't bad because that means I'm making money at least. Again, however, on someone's birthday. But then I'm gonna get pizza and and watching Doom in celebration of someone's birthday. Um, so it starts off a little Eddie Edwards swerve recap from No Surrender, whatever it was. Um, then Moose from Moose Nation comes out for a promo. He's like, I don't care about what Eddie Edwards is. All a bunch of chumps. He Slater challenges Moose. Bad idea, he's he Slater. This is Moose. You thought Brock Lesnar beat you up? Because Brock Lesnar didn't give a... About your kids? Guess what? Moose doesn't give... A moose... About your kids either. Then be fighting words. Uh, then we have the Impact Gang in the back. Saying how are we going to get back? And yeah. First match of the night. We had Jordan Grace versus Matt Cardona. For the Digital Media Champion. And this was, an, uh, I guess, a Weapons Extreme Rules match. Uh, I just remember Jordan Grace was there with a cookie sheet. And she starts to take it to Matt Cardona. Eventually she goes out gets a garbage can of stuff. Matt Cardona has a keyboard. Chokes her with a cord. I'm surprised they found a keyboard that... Actually, yeah. I'm not surprised because my keyboard still has a cord on it. And yeah, most keyboards with a cord are probably in the garbage. By the way. Probably a sad state of stuff. Man, I have so many cords behind, underneath this desk, underneath the writing desk and my computer desk. Looks like some submarine setup. But yeah, it chokes her with the cord. Uh, Grace pulls out the Vader bomb. Um, <laughs> Matt has a bedazzled cup on. Oh, my goodness. Why? Why a bedazzled cup? Chelsea, why did you let your husband use your bedazzler on, on his codpiece? That's, that's terrible. Yeah, there's other weapons in. Um, <laughs> Jordan Grace throws a bag of cell phones. And here's my question to you. Non-thumbtacks things in a bag. What do you think hurts the most? Legos? Jolly Ranchers or cell phones? Hmm. I've seen gummy bears in a bag. Gummy bears probably don't hurt. They just stick to you. They just make things sticky. Jolly Ranchers are hard. I, I, I can imagine if you fell on a bunch of Jolly Ranchers that would hurt. Legos I've stepped on many a time. They hurt. I don't know about cell phones. It's such a waste of black... They had Blackberries, PDAs. It's... Old school time. Like someone who's having a birthday. Old school. But yeah, eventually, uh, Matt Cardona eventually tosses Grace into a chair that was set up. Uh, rolls her up, uses the ropes as an assist. I'll tell you what, this is a fun match. I like heel Matt Cardona. He's like, I want to have a belt. I'll do whatever it takes to have a belt. I like that. Cheeseburger match.
Then we had the Oli Codex and the Inspiration. Are they the same thing? I don't know. Whatever it was, it was Billy Kay. And I forget her name now. Cassie something. Um, talking to... I forget. It's been, it's been a while. Man, my memory is terrible. Dashwood and Madison Rain. I won't forget Madison Rain nor Billy Kay. The other two are, are kind of fuzzy on. You know what that means, folks. I need to... Ah, oh, jog my memory a little bit. But yeah. Um, so they confront each other. And, and I guess, like, Caleb with a K is a hot. But for the iconics, but be careful, Caleb with a K. One of them's married to Sean Spears. I think Billy Kay's married, too. I forget, though. If not, Billy Kay's mine. Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy. Oi, oi, oi. Uh, and then we had Jake something and Trey, and Trey Miguel, a little back and forth. Then our next match was John Schuyler versus, I'm going to butcher this name, Bumpadir Gujar. And I butchered that name. Uh, Schuyler just stomps him, goes after him, gets an arm bar. Uh, no big kick, though. Although, once his face, Gujar has a... He has a sling. He's a used a sling blade and a spine buster. Uh, John Schuyler hit a single arm DT, which always looks great. Uh, Gujar eventually hit a flying spear from the second rope. Not a spear that I've seen in a while either. So that's good. Even though I think there was one post, our spears overused. Eh. You don't see every, every Tom, Dick, Harry, or Jane using them. So yeah, I'll say not yet. Yeah, that's, again, the spear from the second rope was pretty good. Um, Gunjar won. <laughs> yeah, I'm sandwich match. Nothing part. Ooh, nothing particularly great to write home about. Um, w. Morrissey comes out because uh, Brian Myers was there on stage. All right, he's doing that commentary with his own table with his toys and stuff. Um, Skylar kind of distracts him. Look, don't poke the bear. You distract W. Morrissey, you're going through table. Oh, I'm sorry. A little Steve Macklin promo. Then we get the Lady Frost versus Diana Prazzo in, in a champ champ challenge, I guess. Um, Lady Frost was going after the uh, Regina belt for a triple A. Uh, Deanna Parazzo just did a leg throw. That looked great. And kicked to the inner thigh. She worked over the legs until she wanted to work over the arms. Uh, Lady Frost. Lady Frost is impressive. She did a reverse flying knee. That's the only way I can explain it. And then some spinning, like, cannonball thing. Yeah, spinning cartwheel senton. Best ways I can describe it. Tope Cordo, you know, with a twist. I don't know what Excalibur would call it, but yeah. It was a spinning cartwheel senton. Best way to describe it. However, Diana Parazzo winds up um, in the corner. She ducks out of the way. Lady Frost faces the corner. Diana, oh, chop blocks her right in the legs. Goes for a Boston Crab. Lady Frost grabs the ropes. Eventually, Diana clutches, gets a hold of the Fujiwara armbar. Makes the transition to the Rings of Saturn, Venus de Milo, Brutalizer, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Lady Frost taps out. And then on the way back up, I, I have no idea who, who, who Giselle Shaw is. I have no clue. She shows up, talks. I don't know. Did, did her pose and then left. Solid match. Again, I couldn't do a spinning... Cartwheel Santon. You know what? Cheeseburger match. Then it's time for the Bullet Club. The real Bullet Club. The OG Bullet Club. Doc Gallows. The Machine Gunner. Carl 
Anderson, the Switchblade, Jay White, and the Finesser, Chris Bay. Boom, boom, boom. Because they're too sweet for the hobo style. Life. They confront Violet by design. And then it's gang war for And then, uh oh, be very careful of these two. The gorillas of destiny show up. They are not happy about getting booted out of Bullet Club. They got the heart out of Bullet Club. This is all out gang warfare, folks. So we'll see what happens next week in the eight man tag match. Uh, and then we had Zicky Dice versus Jonah. Yeah, Zicky tried to get some offense in. He got, got some punches, some kicks in. Jonah literally did a senton, a, a suplex to a senton to a sit out powerbomb. End of match. Then Gail Kim. And th this was a squash match. This is a can of soup. And Gail Kim comes out. I don't know. Says something. You just can't beat up people when you feel like he's like, well, then feed me people. Stop giving me appetizers. It's like, well, we just got five new recruits in Impact Wrestling. I feel a gauntlet match coming on. Um, then we have Honor. Our main event, we have Honor No More versus... Uh, team Impact, I think in a three-man match, or or one-on-one. -on -one. I honestly forget. I didn't watch much of it. It was short. Uh, Willie Mack, he just begins to take out Honor No More, really. Um, his teammates get beat up. And now he gets, and then, of course, Willie Mack gets beat up by the kingdom. The other people from Honor No More take out the rest of, of uh, Team Impact. Willie Mack gets pinned. In the middle of the ring. Honor no more wins. Ham sandwich of a match. Probably missing stuff because this is when uh, the, the server decided to go bonkers and just do play like replay images of Sacrifice, I guess, which is going to be their next pay-per-view. Which I won't be able to watch because I'll be working the motorcycle races. Yeah. Um, it was Gail came back in the office too with Chelsea and Mickey James. Yeah, they were going to have some three-way. Uh, no, they were discussing contract stuff. I wish they had a three-way. I wish they had a threesome. But oh, no, I shouldn't say that, Say things like that. That's, that's very bad and naughty and very improper to think. You know, fine milf booties on all three of them i shouldn't be saying that i think they're all married yeah that's bad and then eddie edwards comes out explains why very long with very long windingly explains why he's like yeah i did everything for this company i got nothing screw this company i'm gonna be with the cool guys and then his wife alicia edwards hey alicia if eddie kicks you Kicks you to the corner. You can always stay at my place. Okay. Yeah. She's like, well, what about me? You turn your back on your impact family. Are you going to turn your back on, on me as well? Your real family? Eddie Edwards just walks away. Again, Alicia Edwards. If, if you want to make some guy's birthday amazing, just find me here in Daytona Beach, okay? Yes. Yeah, uh, someone's birthday. Alicia Edwards, you and, and some guy on, on his birthday, make, make, make some of that birthday magic happen, okay? But yeah, that was Impact. Um, fun show. I, can't, I, I can never really complain about Impact. Impact is such middle of the road. WWE is either very good or very bad. AEW, again, the, the good of AEW is amazing. However... The bad of AEW is absolutely horrific. And that's it. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Um, a little bit of stuff about next week because I'm not doing a show tomorrow. Again, I have someone's birthday to attend. So yeah, because there's because someone's someone's providing pizza and and booze and and wine. 
So yeah, I mean that's that's gonna be an amazing birthday celebration. Uh, there's no wrestling Saturday, Sunday. I'm off. Monday I will be doing a raw recap. I think Tuesday. I think it's gonna be really a lot of wrestling shows. Oh, also Tuesday, next Tuesday, in addition to NXT. Yeah, because I think I'm work. I'm I have the opening shift. Um, it's the. Mardi Gras, the day I probably drink too much, eat too much, and get fat on fat Tuesday, on fat Tuesday. Yeah, because it's Mardi Gras, baby. Boom. So there will be some matches here for the Mardi Gras madness for the Daytona Beach Bonfire League. I have to, I have to contact some wrestlers see if. I See what some people's availability are. Um, Wednesday, yeah, so that'll be NXT and then the Mardi Gras Madness. Probably be on before that. Um, Wednesday. Wednesday. I'll be watching AEW. I'm not, I'm not going to that dump of a place called Daly's Place. The place is a dump. If I said it's a dump yet, yeah, an overpriced dump. Thursday, I'll probably do an impact review. Unless I'm closing. Oh, no, I'm closing Thursday, I think. I don't know, we'll see. Friday, we'll see what happens. It's the first day of, first Friday of Lent. It's going to be weird. Saturday, I'm going to be working. Um, it's bike week. Bike week's coming up next Thursday. Yeah. So I will have a bike week special. For you guys, because I'm going to be working the races. Uh, I'll show you a little bit about what happens in the more civilized parts of Bike Week. There's no way, I'm hell, no way in hell I'm going to that utter cesspool of scum and villainy called the Cabbage Patch. Or, or even further north. There are worse diseases you could get during Bike Week than COVID-19. Trust me. You, you rub against the wrong chick the wrong way. With the wrong body part. And yeah, something's going to crawl from her to you. Bad juju all around. I get the most civilized things. But other than that, to thank everyone for watching. Oh yes, and also Sunny Bimbo, thank you for your comment. The one and only Hobo Tom.